All right, so this guy, David Lucas, just released his first stand-up special, Uncancelable, which was filmed live at Joe Rogan's Comedy Club, the Comedy Mothership in Austin, Texas. If you don't know David, he has been on Kill Tony regularly, and he even used to be Brendan Schaub's opener, so I'm not going to act like he hasn't been in the trenches and put in his hours trying to be one of the ever-dwindling 250. But this thing was truly terrible, guys. I didn't like it. I apologize for that. And I hope it's okay that I didn't like a thing. But I found it interesting, because I think it's a good example of why the Austin comedy scene is so boring and, frankly, depressing. So let's check this thing out. First of all, the title of the thing, Uncancelable. Guys, it is 2024, and I think most of us can agree that the whole cancel culture concept is completely played out. At this point, as far as I can tell, getting canceled just means feeling bad about yourself because you're getting negative feedback instead of having all of society rallying together to collectively pump your tires. So right away, David is playing up the idea that he's about to spit some wild stuff that society really isn't ready for, and man, he doesn't care about any negative reactions that the audience might have because he's a bold comedy maverick, and he is uncancelable. But I'm not sure how David squares that away because he himself, just a few weeks ago, had to wheel out the apology podium to apologize to the public for a joke he made about how he would have shot George Floyd. Don't no, ooh at that joke. I think I just canceled the rest of my black fans. Oh, you put the hat on, nigga. You ready to go? All right, baby. Okay. <laughs> uh, just want to apologize to his kids and everybody oh, who was damn, close to him. I'm an edgy, uh, push the boundary comedian. Oh, My intention was to never cause harm. Just want to apologize. So right away, this whole uncancelable shtick is pretty whack. You know who is actually uncancelable, David? Me. Because I'm a nobody. And nobody knows who the hell I even am. And I just don't matter. I do like that he used the proper Canadian spelling on uncancelable, though. A nice little nod to the great white north. Thank you, David. So anyway, let's take a look at this thing. I am preparing myself to laugh. You see, I have empty, I see oh God, it's the comedy mothership. You know, I have never even been there and I'm already sick of this place. I feel like we are being gaslit daily, guys. Brainwashed by the king of mainstream media, Joe Rogan, into blindly accepting that this place is some kind of comedy mecca. I don't think it is, guys. There is some kind of mass formation psychosis at play here. A major problem that I have with this Comedy Mothership project is summed up in this image that stuck in my brain and helped me understand why this place sucks. So Joe designed this Wall of Fame thing inside the club there. It's decorated with all these legendary comedy albums like Robin Williams, Richard Pryor, George Carlin, lots of good ones in there, some of my favorites. But Joe very sneakily put his own specials mixed in there. See, there's one there. Strange times. Is that cool? Are you allowed to do this? This is embarrassing, Joe. This is gaslighting, guys. Most people don't pick up on this stuff, so when Joe pulls this slick juxtaposition grift, it plants the thought in your head that Joe is one of the greats. This is comedy propaganda, guys. I hope you can see through this stuff. All right, let's watch this thing. Ugh, the music. Uh, uh, fuck. That voice, I, I just can't wait till it stops. But that might be my issue, guys. I've got the misophonia. Empty. Oh, wait, is this Danny Brown? Yeah, That's cool. Bunch of alien crap. As I explained, guys, the alien stuff is a Trojan horse for Joe Rogan to use as a gateway into born-again Christian fundamentalism. More mental manipulation from the king of mainstream media. Please be aware of that. Wow, great can. Who the hell is this guy? Why is his face like that? Did he just spot someone in the audience that's been flagged by the dystopian face scanner system at the door? Why does everyone that works here look so hostile? There's looser security at the Gaza Strip, guys. For a comedy club, it sure feels super serious for some reason. Yeah, I don't get that. That's another problem I have with this whole scene. The vibe is just so hostile. Comedy is supposed to be fun, isn't it? How can I have fun with this head in the same room as me? Wow, okay, it's even more serious than I thought. They are hosting a perpetual funeral for Mitzi Shore. Nothing gets me more in the mood for a chuckle than being at a funeral. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, David. Oh man, this is the crappy small room. No, David, that's disappointing. 
And this room sucks. No heckling, guys. No talking. No breathing loudly. Laugh at all the jokes. Clap when it's time to clap. You forfeit your right to free speech at the door to the comedy mothership. And don't forget to incinerate your phone in the blast furnace before you enter. Oh, come on, you can do hey, there he is. Shout out to Danny Brown. Don't know who the other guy is that he's talking to, but his head is the spitting image of the fish from Super Mario World. I think his name is Cheap Cheap. Interesting. Get it together, bitch. More hostility. An interesting interior design choice. I don't know why Joe thought the audience should be subjected to his own personal intrusive thoughts, but there you go. For David Lucas's first yes. ever special, let's go! Let's go! Is this the guy? Is that David? Oh, never mind. Crowd shot. Okay, let's investigate this. Who are these guys? Hmm. These guys traveled all the way from Des Moines to visit the legendary mothership guys. Show some respect. Oh shit, that's David. Uh, wow, I feel dumb. Is he okay? Why is he looking at his text messages? That's a bad look, unless... Well, maybe there's an emergency at home or something. I guess we shouldn't assume. Hope everything's okay. I do like the pulling of the king can out of his pocket, though. Nice, that's my favorite part so far. What's up, Austin? Oh god, that's... that's got a sting. People are already leaving. They're like rushing out of there too. Well, I respect those guys leaving. They could tell right away this show wasn't gonna be for them and they pieced out of there real quick. More people should do that. Guys, if you go to a party or meet some people at a bar, don't feel bad about leaving immediately if you feel like doing that. Don't stick around to people please or anything. Just leave. Don't even say anything. Guys, the fabric of our social contract is already shredded to pieces. You can just do what you want now. It doesn't matter. Just a tip. What's up, Austin? Oh, hi, David. Austin's weird. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's can we get some gain on the mic there? I can't fucking hear anything. I've been been in Austin. Hey. Not because I won't do it. I just don't have a choice. <laughs> Lovely crowd shot. Feel free to pause at home and analyze what strains of human have shown up to this event. It's hard to date white women, though. Because, like... Slow down, David. You can't really, like, discipline them the way you want to. <laughs> For real, it's, it's like as soon as you put your hands around their neck, they turn red. It's the weirdest shit. Oh, God. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, you cannot say that, David. It's like, damn, bitch, I'm going to jail, huh? Fuck. Oh, this man is testing the limits. Thank him. That's why I like black girls, man. You can beat the shit out of them. So the premise for the opening joke is that he doesn't like dating white girls because he likes to physically abuse his partners. And when you choke white women, they stop breathing and turn red. And he doesn't like that because it makes him think about being sent to jail. And he likes black women because you can abuse them all you want without leaving any evidence of your crime. David is just kind of describing the way he likes to hit women. I'm not sure where the creative twist is to this. I guess the premise to this special is going to be, I'm going to be as edgy as possible. Isn't it crazy what I'm saying? You're not allowed to say this. They're going to cancel me for this. And you, as an audience member, get to feel like you're partaking in some kind of act of rebellion for laughing at this stuff. I believe in domestic violence, man. I do. You know what I'm saying? I, I really do. If you do it right, like a lot of guys don't do domestic violence right, man. Like... They be hitting that girl in the nose and the lip, you know, leaving her bloody and shit. You can't do that, man. You got to hit these hoes on top of the head, nigga. You, uh, you got to fucking Donkey Kong a bitch sometimes, man. Oh, God. Somebody call the police. It's like, bitch, you going to have to get a CAT scan to prove I beat on you, ho. Uh, Ain't no this man proof. needs to be canceled. This is forced laughter. These people believe they are on a spiritual pilgrimage just to be at the mothership. They traveled many miles. They don't want to accept the fact that the comedy they're hearing stinks. They will play the part of contented audience member and perform these laughs for themselves. Otherwise, they'll realize they are fools for having come all this way, and that's a very uncomfortable thought. To realize you've been duped is a bad feeling, guys. But we all got to be honest with ourselves in life. Don't do this. A study came out recently showing that we are twice as likely to accept information that confirms our existing beliefs versus information that challenges them. Just something to keep in mind. 
<laughs> now he's sucking on a damn battery or something. I don't think you should hold a vape thing like a cigarette. Yeah, I don't like this at all. Ugh. Blech. Then David explains that he doesn't like when fat women have confidence because they start turning him down for sex. Do you guys hear this audio? It's hauntingly empty. What is that clunk sound? You can't leave that in there. Who edited this thing? And I'm looking at the timeline here. This thing is only 32 minutes long, and at the pace he's going, he's going to get out like three jokes if he can even manage to stay awake for half an hour. Like, can you believe fat girls say no now? Somebody stop this guy. It's like, no? <laughs> Bitch, have you seen you? You are 392. No should not be in your vocabulary. But what I'm gathering from this joke is that David is unable to pick up girls, even ones he thinks are so disgusting that they ought to be desperate enough to be guaranteed to hook up with him. But even those ones reject him, and he's upset about that. Here's an opportunity to make this joke a little funnier by maybe being a little self-deprecating. Let's see if he does that. I bet if I put ketchup on my dick, you'll suck it, bitch. Ah, brilliant. Put some fucking grilled onions around it, you'll get to work, huh, bitch? <laughs> Oh, it's like a hot dog. I get it. <laughs> Very good, David. Thank you. I don't even know how Lizzo became a spokesperson for fat bitches. Did you hear that, guys? Again, the plate clanking on the table or something. Did they mic the audience's tableware for some reason? Why is that so audible? Wow. The best joke in the opening section is about his grandfather being racist and seeing the world as only having three races, white, black, and Chinese. And he walks into a Mexican place and wonders why it's full of Chinese guys. And that's kind of a funny joke, honestly, but unfortunately the credit for that one goes to his grandpa, who it sounds like is actually much funnier than his grandson. Shout out to grandpa. I'm just so out of touch with black shit now, man. Like, I hang around too many famous white people. I hang around fucking Rogan eating elk meat. Oh, God, there it is. The name drops. All right, let's talk about why this special is emblematic of everything that's wrong with the Austin comedy scene. The whole thing revolves around Joe Rogan, and that's a problem. The scene is almost like Joe's little fantasy land, where comics try to get his attention by writing material that's going to appeal to Joe and possibly get them into the club, or maybe if they're really lucky, on his podcast. And I think that's a big part of what David Zack suffers from. He wants some of that Rogan runoff so bad. Like on Kill Tony, you'll notice he will roast everyone there, but never ever Joe Rogan. Because if you say the wrong thing to Joe, he will cancel you from the scene, like when he canceled Carlos Mencia. You're not even Mexican! Why don't you tell the truth about you being half German? <laughs> Want to show you're uncancelable, David? Talk some actual shit about Joe Rogan. Yeah, you won't. You won't. Uncancelable! Oh, fuck. Sorry. Anyway, so you end up with this scene designed by a bunch of comedians aiming to please Joe Rogan and make him laugh. But the problem is Joe Rogan's sense of humor is fucking terrible. The whole scene will eventually become a real-world manifestation of the fantasy world conceived of within Joe's decrepit mind. And that's a scary thought, guys. Anyway, I'll save you the trouble of watching the rest of this. The rest of the special is a bunch of crowd work, which consisted of him calling a bunch of guys gay and one guy a cuck cutting edge stuff. You're grown with a backwards hat. <laughs> Just like this fag right here. Nigga. You are gay, nigga. This is like... He tries to wade into some political stuff, but it's obvious he barely knows about anything and just kind of sputters out a few stale Fox News headlines as jokes, just praying Joe will notice him. Biden is just fucking the economy up. He ain't doing shit right. He didn't handle the situation in Kabul right. Biden's whole cabin sucks. Everybody around him sucks. It's cabin it, David. Come on. I don't want no reparations because I feel like as soon as you give niggas money, Money would no longer have any value, you know what I'm saying? He does some pretty transparent political pandering. I don't know if he believes any of this stuff or if he's going for that easy audience, but it's just not interesting or funny at all. And then you got these far left political views, purple haired managers at Trader Joe's. Uh, politics. That think it's okay for these trannies to read to our kids. David Lucas seems to want to become the Candace Owens of stand up, but it just doesn't work because he is so stupid. Candace at least has enough brain cells to make that grift work. Then he talks for a while about how he can't believe a guy could be gay, 
talking a lot about dicks and butts and how unbelievable the whole concept of a gay is. My jokes are very cerebral. So if you come to my show, I might say a lot of crazy shit, but on your drive home, you're going to be thinking a lot. I don't even get gay people, man. It's like, it's like, why you want to be gay, bro? Why you want to get your booty hole blowed out? You're going to be thinking a lot. Okay, so I decided to take David at his word here and really think about what this special could mean, because on its surface, it's just so stupid. And there must be a hidden meaning. He deeply ponders gay sex and describes how he often imagines what a gaping anus would look and feel like. It's obvious this guy has some deeply repressed sexual urges, guys. It's like, why you want an empty Pringles can for an asshole? It's... You're gonna be thinking a lot. He might be trapped inside his own mind prison, and he is very horny in there. And you niggas take whole dicks? What the fuck? <laughs> I don't understand gay man, bro. I don't, I don't understand that gay shit at all, man. I, I really don't think being gay is sustainable long term. You know, people always point to something like Gringo Poppy uh, as the worst stand-up special ever, but I think Uncancelable is even worse. <laughs> Gringo Poppy at least has some rewatchability to it. I can't think of any reason why anybody would ever rewatch Uncancelable. But maybe I am the problem. Maybe I am the asshole. I am open to that possibility. But I think I realized what the point of this special was. David gave us the clues, but you got to put in a little bit of work to make sense of them. So David said, you can't cancel him. And if you do, then he will come out as gay. I don't like that trans shit, man. And I can do that joke because I'm black. <laughs> and if you try to cancel me, I'll come out as gay. Look, I don't understand the logic either, guys, but this is what he said, and we got to take people at their word. You can't cancel a fat black faggot. So he did the George Floyd joke then got canceled as is evidenced by the fact that he apologized. The moment I apologize for a George Floyd joke, now I gotta apologize for every other joke. You don't apologize unless you've been canceled. I just wanna apologize. So canceled he was. And here he says it, if you cancel him, he will finally come out as gay. And here he does just that. And if you try to cancel me, I'll come out as gay. I just wanna apologize. All right, so there it is, guys. David Lucas has come out as gay. Congratulations, David, that's very brave of you. A weird way to do it, for sure, but that's okay. And as he says, you can't cancel a gay black guy. Hence the title, Uncancelable. See guys, the clues were all there. We just had to put the puzzle pieces together. Anyways, I give this thing a one out of five. It's only 30 minutes, which I'm grateful for. And a third of it is silent pauses while David waddles around taking vape hits. It's too bad Brendan Schaub quit comedy because David really was a perfect opener for him. One of the few guys that can make Brendan feel like a refreshing digestive by comparison. In spite of his pursuit of being a cerebral, edgy comic, his jokes seem more at home in a middle school playground. Low effort and very, very dumb. Well, David seems kind of sad. I don't know, guys. I get that vibe from a lot of these Austin guys, and there is a deep sadness to the whole scene, even the guys at the top. All that success, and they just come across as being deeply unhappy at the end of the day. I don't know, maybe they're all disillusioned with the world after finding out the things that suck about L.A. also exist in every other stupid city out there. But maybe it's just me, guys. Like I said, maybe I am, in fact, the asshole. The whole I'm being canceled marketing grift always seemed like an obvious ploy, but I've just never seen it done in such a transparent way like David has. And it looks like it backfired completely, and anybody that likes that edgy anti-cancel culture stuff thinks he's a phony now, and everyone else just thinks he's an asshole. Anyway, so in a way, he did kind of cancel himself with that apology video, but at least now he can live his life in peace as a happy, free, and gay man. All right, well, I don't really know why I made this video, but thanks for watching. I apologize to the families. All the families out there, I am sorry. Okay, okay, good, 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 gotta go.